Let me cut straight to the chase, right? Why does this matter, Peter? To me, it's not about quotas. It's about good decision-making in the economy that works. So, to give one example, the banking crisis in 2008, there were lots of different reasons for that, you know, from uh, regulation to risk to pay and so on. But one of the strands of that put forward was there was an enormous preponderance of men making key decisions um, in executive boardrooms and actually having um, something close to a gender balance. We don't have to be too mathematical about it, but a bit more balance gives you access to a range of views, but also access to a range of skill sets, and you might make better decisions as a result. So, of course, training the, the next generation, and of course, this is everything, presumably um, from building aeroplanes to teaching science in schools, um, to have better female representation seems a great idea. But then, do you think it should be a choice, i.e. girls, if you want to go into that, off you go, or do you think it should be more engineered? Um, well, it's always going to be a choice for individuals because we can all choose what to study at A-levels or if we're lucky enough to go to university and so on. But there, there are government targets across pretty much everything in society, from crime to sport to, to waiting lists to education. It's the idea that you have a central target, uh, even if you don't hit it, from which some behavioural change follows is a good thing, and targets tend to be um, proposed by governments of all strands. What do you think to this, um, Martin? Do you think, as a woman... I mean, by the way, just as a disclosure, I am a woman, I think, you, last really? time I checked. I mean, uh, I think I can still say that. And I, my professional career, it has been in STEM, so I've always worked in IT. I've always been pretty much, I would say, the only girl. Uh, it didn't bother me one jot. Uh, I used to have a right good time, lots of banter, never felt kind of, oh, I need more girls to be around me or anything like that. Does it matter if girls are underrepresented in that sector? No, because it's about freedom of choice. And the funny thing is, when you look at the gender equality paradox, the society is typically with the most choice and the most equality mm. on the planet, Finland, Sweden, Norway, they have a very, very low take-up of women choosing STEM subjects. Whereas when you look at places like Oman and Morocco, where they are very patriarchal, they have the highest take-up on the planet. And now why is that? Quite simply, because to have financial independence and not be reliant upon men is beneficial in countries like Oman, whereas where you have a, a fair childcare system, equality, well-paid and cheap childcare for women, they tend not to go into STEM, STEM studies. And so, therefore, when we look at choice, it should be about that. And when we also look at what women do choose to do, 75% of teachers are women, 60% of vets are women, 80% of psychiatrists are women, 90% of midwives are women. Great. But we never hear for equality drives to get more men into those, those, those services where we probably should. Well, do you think we should? Do you think yeah, there so, should be an equality so push or whatever? When I first got into politics as a campaigning journalist on men's issues and looking at the lack of father figures in the previous item about the, the boom in knife crime, absent father figures is a huge driving issue. And there's loads and loads of evidence to show that putting positive male role models into those boys' lives has a huge beneficial effect for all of society lowering crime, um, um, lowering addiction, um, less teenage pregnancies. And if you've got more male teachers, that would be a positive intervention. I've been in Parliament, I've sat down with politicians, I've written endless articles on this, and to date in the UK, there are precisely zero campaigns for this because it would be sexist. So what I'm saying is, you can't cherry-pick where we have these equality drives, leave it to freedom of choice, and when we do that, women in the West are less likely to choose STEM subjects. Yeah, see, I am all about choice, but I also think there's something, Peter, because I would always say, if I had my time again, my career again, I would have been a trader in the city. But the floor in the plan, for me, I was um, at school in Hull, I didn't even know the city was a thing. I didn't know about uh, stocks and shares trading. It was just, I just didn't know any, anything about that. So I believe that you can't be what you can't see. So whilst I absolutely believe in choice and individual choice, and I don't agree with this, you know, silly, oh, one guy there, so one girl there, please. I don't agree with any of that, and I don't agree with quotas. Uh, I do think we've got to get better at showing uh, all kids, not just girls, but all kids, these are the opportunities that can await you if you want to go into them. Well, there's nothing the Labour Party have proposed today um, that would restrict choice. It's about trying to open up choice. But I like the idea, in it, um, the phrase you used, I think it was what you can't see. What you, you can't, can't see, be. you can't be. It, because it is about 
opportunities. You know, for example, when I went to university 20 years ago and studied English literature, which is not particularly blokish, reading a lot of poems... Um, <laughs> Very romantic, though. <laughs> to, to a certain extent. But also, I was able to do that perhaps because I came from a fairly comfortable family. 20 years on, where the, the fees are much, much, much higher, mm. and if you're from a poor household, the way you choose your course is going to be totally different because you're thinking, well... Three or four years reading a lot of poems is very intellectually re uh, enriching, but if you've got 50 grand of debt at the end of it all, um, and then you need to buy a house. So I think your, where you come from, what you can see, as you put it, and your background is just as important. Yeah, but that's not about gender, is it? That's about a quality of background. Like if you're working class, you're much, much less likely to go to university. I'm a coal miner's son, I made it. But back in the day when I, when I went to university, there was a full grant. I, I wouldn't do that now. I doubt I would go down that route because the, the prospects of taking on a 50 grand debt to me would be, would be stratospheric. I know, but some subjects, they should be charged. I mean, as a taxpayer, no offence to you, Peter, I don't really want to be subsidising you to sit there uh, learning poems to go serenade whoever with in your spare time. I should say that, that's not the purpose do. of an English degree. But... <laughs> yeah, right. Well, if that's what you want to do and you want to learn your poems and all the rest of it, do it on your dime. So I think you should have uh, fees and things like that for those types of courses. We digress a little bit and I must say, I can't end this segment because it is National Apprentice Week and I feel that apprenticeships get a little bit of an unfair rap. I think that there's a bit of a stigma uh, sometimes about young uh, people choosing apprenticeships over going to university and I must say, um, you know, out of everything I've done in my life, I did what, what we used to call a YTS, I think they'd changed their name, but we still call them that. I did an apprenticeship in business administration and honestly, it set me on my path to achieve things in business. So anyone that's got a young kid who doesn't know what to do uh, as a next step, I highly, highly recommend uh, a modern apprenticeship. So I do.